but now we get to see a new one. All right. So we're going to go to Light Shot. Are you guys ready? We are. We, we talked about this yesterday, and, and we're going to have some fun, right? We are. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys have six minutes starting now. Terrific. Well, we are LightShot, a sensor-based mobile gaming platform that allows completely interactive gaming anywhere in the world. And we're going to show you what the new generation of gaming looks like with a little teaser video. So here, here's... So as we take a look at the technology today and you go back 10 years and you think about what mobile gaming meant, people would be pretty amazed to, back then to think of, we have basically the power of a supercomputer in our pocket and all they're doing is using it to play words with friends. So Tom and I took a look at all of the amazing technology that's going on around us here at CES and decided to make a kick has gaming platform and so that platform here is LightShot. So I'm Tom Catola. I'm the CTO and co-founder of LightShot. And I'm going to show you a brief pre preview of, uh, or I'm going to explain one of our, our first game, which is Assassin, which is based on the classic real life game that's been played for the last 30 years on college campuses throughout the US. So in Assassin, a number of players come in. Everybody's assigned another player who they have to hunt down. Everybody's a target for someone else in the game, but nobody knows who their assassin is. You have a specific amount of time to complete the mission, and if that time, if you don't kill your target within that time, then uh, you become a valid target for every other player in the game. So it's this sort of, you know, people running around, getting excited, trying to sneak around and chasing each other. So what ends up happening with our system is we have the lighter. It shoots an infrared beam to the light puck, which immediately registers here, and if you bring up the phone, you can see that uh, the mission has been completed, and the timer's already ticking down to give me my next mission. Go back to the slides. So this is the first of many games that we're planning for our, our platform. So the, uh, there's a game in development uh, called Invasion, which has been designed by the co-creators of Humans vs. Zombies. And in Invasion, uh, if you're familiar with a tower defense game, you sit there and you're frantically trying to move resources around. Well, imagine that concept played out here in the parking lot with your friends. You're sitting there, you have a base that you have to protect, you know that there's an invasion coming somewhere, you're not really sure, you're trying to frantically direct people around to move resources so that you can defend your territory. There's another game that we're doing uh, called Besieged, and Besieged is similar to what's in a first-person shooter. Uh, with a capture the flag, so it's a fantasy themed capture the flag game which utilizes the accelerometers inside the lighter. So you can, as a wizard for character for example, you can wave it around and that does a rune, you know, so you can cast your next spell. So these are just like a brief glimpse into the kind of things that we're excited and looking to do. We're looking to gamify the entire internet of things. We're connecting to all sorts of devices and we're really trying to get people to play mobile games without sitting there staring at this tiny little screen. We're trying to get them to look up, interact with real people, but without having to forego all the technology that we've gotten used to. So what we've developed here is a totally cloud-based platform. So all the gaming activity goes, leverages the, the power of your phone. All that data is relayed through the internet. And with the platform both being open source software and open source hardware, you're able to develop your own games and your own peripherals. You can use ours or you can 3D print your own, and depending on whatever type of game you want. Because the lighter utilizes an array of sensors of Bluetooth, IR, accelerometers, and others that you can program for whatever type of game you want, whether it's a fantasy RPG, first person assassin, and you can even, uh, we have developer kits where people can take the hardware and develop the uh, own peripherals and hardware in, for their depending game. And so, in short, we've developed a totally next generation gaming system that leverages all of the Internet of Things, connecting those devices together, 
and bringing the gameplay together. So no longer do you need a game master for each of these uh, interactive type games. Now all of it's automated and you have the ability to customize your own game with own rule sets. One of the great parts about this is that uh, we've taken it a step further and integrated heads up display. So now you can see all of your in-game stats, your health, your uh, any type of game information that you have as part of the gameplay, you can be relayed in, in real time. And so here, as an example, uh, players can see what other uh, location of their teammates, they can see their health stats, uh, depending on what game they're playing. So in terms of uh, monetization, not only do we have our own uh, apps that we're creating, and as you can see the peripherals, as well as the STL files, but we are developing this as an open community and hosting the uh, game, third-party game developers. So as we mentioned, uh, the game developers from Humans vs. Zombies are developing a game for us, and that's just the beginning of many. So the big thing that we want to announce today is we've had a lot of success over the last uh, year, but today we are launching our Kickstarter campaign. And uh, very excited that it, if you go to Lightshot, dot com slash kickstarter or just look us up on kickstarter uh love to have you there to back us thanks great very good so who wants to go hunting <laughs> well I, I'll, I'll take the uh, first shot very uh, good. so to speak i'm, oh, I'm sure you're waiting for that <laughs> uh, the the main question i have is what's the price point and how does that relate to the market because if you think about the products that are out there or the alternatives that are out there today, we have laser tag that everybody's probably heard of with a similar thing but not connected to the internet, paintball, and then at the low end of the market you have Nerf, right? Nerf guns, which from what I can see with shelf space in big stores like Target, Walmart, etc., they probably have pretty significant volume. So how do you think about where your, where your price point is, what is it, and how you fit into that market and your market size? Sure. So. We're going off for the Kickstarter campaign as uh, a set for the lighter and the light puck at $150. Now, comparatively, if you think about what uh, the platform can do compared to other uh, devices, say a Spiro or others that are priced similarly, you have an endless array of games that can be played or developed. We think it's actually pretty competitively priced. But in addition, we hope to get that pricing down as we get adoption. So we're hoping for a super successful Kickstarter campaign and uh, really start bringing down the cost of that when we do a full commercial rollout. And, and what do you see as the market size? So in interactive gaming space, it, we are looking at uh, games like Ingress that had over a million downloads in six months and Google didn't even advertise it. Uh, you look at games, as you say, like Nerf, we've studied that a lot because Humans vs. Zombies was a big uh, sale point for Nerf and, and those guys are excited about coming over to our platform. But they, they increased, uh, I believe, threefold in five years their, their revenues, along with platforms like Skylanders, which is very interactive in terms of the digital and the physical, over $2 billion in just the short time that they've developed the platform. We have a firm belief that there is a, a tremendous demand, as you said, with paintball, a laser tag, all of that is digitized. But that's just one part of this because you can now create your own peripherals. So it's not just laser tag. But that's not really the revenue target, right? It's people creating their own peripherals. I mean, so let me ask you. So the, the light pipe uh, is separate from the gun, or is it all combined as one? So the, the lighter and light puck are the right. base system. Okay. And then, yes, you can buy our peripherals, or you can download our STL files and 3D okay. print your own, um, or uh, you can design your own and upload it to the platform. But you think about the gun is what, you know, right? Like when you think about first-person shooter games and the amount of games that are going to be developed for that, how many... What's that going to cost? Is that going to be available as part of the initial kit? And how many games do you think you know, are going to be available so it's attractive enough to start to get to mass? So um, maybe I can take a shot yep. at answering that. So Assassin, our first game, is available for iOS and Android already. Okay. And since we're selling the hardware here, we're working on two more games as well as a high-level toolkit, which will let non-developers sort of, if you have a game you want to play with your friends and you have an idea for a rule set, then you can kind of script in a rule set and play the game that way. We're really, you know, so far mobile is primarily dominated by casual games with a few exceptions like Ingress, which is this kind of 
persistent global battle. We're really looking to try and create a system where, say, if you're on your lunch break and with a bunch of coworkers, you can quickly do a game, you can run around and play. It's very intense. So it's very different from what you'd normally expect with a, a, a casual game, but doesn't require the same sort of time commitment when you've got this you know, global, persistent kind of gaming. How old do you think your initial audience is? I think our initial audience is going to be about you know, 18 to 25. It'll mm -hmm. skew a little bit lower and higher, depending <laughs> on how you know, into games people are. You know what's amazing is the whole community that is untapped in the world of live-action role-playing, or LARPers, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Comic Con or uh, Stan Lee's new uh, convention where uh, cosplay, but this is exploding and people are very much getting into being able to customize their own uh, experience, whether it's costumes or, or the like. So, so, so one, one follow-up question that I had is when I think about Nerf and I think about paintball, there's, there's a, a penalty and there's reward. Okay, and when you think about siblings, I have a younger brother, we played laser tag, we played nerf, nope. etc. There was the thrill of reward, which is creating pain for your brother, okay? Right. <laughs> um, but there's also the penalty phase, which is pain when you get hit, both emotional pain, but in paintball, physical pain, you see the people, they have the welts, they have this and that. Do you think those are important elements to bake into what you have, not just the reward side, but is there a a penalty side that you bake into what you're doing? So I think the, you know, not everybody physical wants to penalty. feel injured. Yeah. So the physical pain, we can't do anything about that. Okay. But once we're on the internet, because we're connected, now you can start doing ranking systems, this kind of thing. Like normally, if you're a really good paintballer, people only know if you're really good if you're one, two, or three, and you're playing like across the US. So you could be great for your region and nobody knows about it. Now that all this stuff's connected to the internet, you can do leagues, guilds, rankings, you know, that I, sort of thing. I think this is probably one of the biggest challenges that you face from a product perspective and getting the really organic growth because when people are in the physical world, and I think about this a lot as a mechanical engineer, the way in which people interact with products can be quite different than what you'd see in an online first, per, you know, a first person shooter. Right. And although a lot of people might not admit it, that risk of penalty, I think, is a very important consideration in any sort of shooting game that goes all the way back to when people were coming out of caves. Well, absolutely. And I think we kind of see it uh, adjacent to it. So, for example, paintball didn't put Nerf out of business or vice versa. And we see this as an entirely new way to game. And on top of it, because the system is open from a hardware side, if you wanted to make a zapper and, and <laughs> shock your brother, you could do that. But in this will also connect to, to drones. It will connect utilizing iBeacon, any device you want. So if you want to create claymores or IR grenades, you can do that as well. So I, I won't stop you from shocking your brother. <laughs> Carolina, you're holding one of those down there. Yeah, but of course I like this 3D printed one. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> but I have a question. Uh, you're launching uh, a lot of uh, stuff here, like uh, features uh, and a few items. How do you want to make it clear to the audience what exactly this product is? I mean, what do you, do you want to say in your marketing strategy in just one sentence? Well, <laughs> we say it's a, it, it, in a simple sentence, it's kind of like we for everywhere. You can take this outside. No longer are you tethered to your screen. Now you can game anywhere in the world. That, that is our, there's our one sentence. Oh, that was a good answer, That right? was a really good answer. That's a really hard question. That was a really great answer. <laughs> Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Well Thank you. done.